they climb these mountains. I have to use it, otherwise I can't get it off. It's not, I wouldn't do it. And no season two. Alright guys, let's go and get started. I'm very curious about the religious aspects of the show and kind of where that came from and for the actors how you approach playing that because it's really prevalent in just, I mean not just the obvious okay you have a religious character but sort of in some of the imagery and things like that and maybe how that affects how you look at the story and the characters. Anybody that wants to answer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not an actor, but, yeah. th but there is religion. Um, I think it's, it's more about faith than it is about a particular religion. It's, it's, it's about looking for a solution. It's about um, trying to reason out an argument that you can't process yourself. I think that for me that's what religion is. I don't have a religion of my own, but I kind of respect people that lean towards that. So... Yeah, I don't. You know, the the religious imagery in there, I think, is attached to Leanne as a character. I think it's it's her belief system that she's been raised in, and yeah, I feel like it's very strong. I feel like there's something mysterious. There's something that I would never kind of say nothing does or doesn't exist. And yeah, you like that one? <laughs> I Thanks. like that. That was great. Thanks, Neil. You're welcome. I have a question for Lauren. Peeling yeah. back the layers of, of Dorothy's character, there's so much going on there. What was it like for you as an actress to kind of peel back each layer and learn something new? Were you surprised to learn anything about yourself as an actress as well? Um, well, I, I mean, I, I just relish the opportunity to play this character. I feel honored to get to try to make, you know, this... You know, she's dealing with so much, and she's dealing with it in such a bizarre way. And and uh, you know, the writing is so is so beautiful, thanks to Tony. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, when I saw the script, I was just like, how how on earth will I do that? It's so she's so fragile. She's also so big, and you know, presentational and type A, and uh, trying to you know everything is perfect in her life, and except she has this giant failure. Um, just I mean, the character breaks my heart. Um, I guess just, uh, you know, for me as an actor, I, I work to make things as personal as possible, which is easy because on the surface, uh, she's, this character is a, a mother going back to work, and I've had that experience. Um, but then, um, you know, to figure out how to, how to let all of her little cracks come out, and when, when there are cracks in the veneer, I don't know, just working with beautiful actors and incredible artists. It's been really uh, fun. I mean, it's the best, you know, to have a character that's, that's uh, so it's such a challenge. It's great. Um, kind of on the faith topic, there is like a hint of magic realism, I feel, in the story. Right. Where it's like we don't know uh, if someone's making these things happen, is right. higher power, you know. Right. The house coming to life. Um, so, what is it like playing that aspect, and also for you, like, what does it mean to you to sort of weave that in? Both looking at me. <laughs> um, I think what's so great about the show is that you doubt everything that you see, and you can start the episode firmly believing that my character and the things that are happening in the house are because of one thing, and then you'll end the episode thinking completely differently and um, I think that's fun to play for us is that you, we sort of give you something and you're like this cannot be explained but then we explain it you know so um, yeah I think that's kind of the to and fro of the series is you you think you know what you're seeing but you really don't right you know, yeah. different characters mm. might experience the same exact phenomenon in different ways one might think it's a miracle and one might an actual real life uh, explanation. explanation. I think that, that was, I mean, from the writing process, it was always how do you present a story that can be viewed in two different ways? Mm. Is it, you can, and it, it comes down to you as a viewer, do you have faith? Do you believe in miracles or do you question everything you see? And that's where we divide the characters and the audience at the same time. So you should be able to watch this story and think, wow, my God, miracles are happening. And at the same time, you can look at it and go, that that young girl's really exploiting this family in their desperation. So are you watching a miracle or are you watching a crime? It's, yeah. It kind of has to work on both those levels, which is challenging, but 
I buy it. <laughs> How do you write? Of it? Oh, sorry. How do you write and uh, play so that you were always, um, you know, working with those two lines, like with great difficulty. <laughs> you know, you kind of it, it's about finding stories that play into characters' hopes and desires, and at the same time questioning what's in front of your nose. Um, how you do it, I don't know. I mean, we there was never a point when. Knight and I discussed this very much at the beginning that everything that happens, there has to be a logical explanation. Otherwise, you're just in fairy tale land, and then anything can happen, and then there are no rules, and then you lose track. As a writer, you're like, oh, I don't know, a unicorn lands and takes a dump on the table, and then <laughs> like, it's like That's you can't. Eight. Yeah, well, two. <laughs> you know, you, you can't do that as a writer. If you don't have rules and restrictions, then you can't even begin to do your job. It seems especially in this genre too, mm. like in the in the world of the thriller, which is new to me. But that, mm. that like the rules have to be set up. Yeah, very much. You don't cross a certain line, and if you do, everything collapses. So I feel like you know, after binging through the whole season and being on the edge of my seat after <laughs> each episode, um, it's seen more just, than I. Yeah, it, me too. <laughs> it's absolutely too brilliant. Awesome. And what are, what are your plans for like the? I feel like you know, with the final episode, without spoiling anything, there's obviously more to come. And now I'm like, oh my god, how long do I have to wait for that? <laughs> but like, what are your plans like for for more seasons and things like that? How far out do you have the story planned? Would, yeah, there's there's always an end game, I think, with writing, but I, I try not to specifically say I know every single step okay. because something happens in every episode that I learn something new about the characters or something. I, I find a crack in there that is worth burrowing into. So, yeah, there's very definite forward momentum going into season two. We know what's been lost and we know what the characters are striving to regain. So as long as there's always that you see the desire in the characters, there's more story to tell. And there's, as you know, at the end of season one, there's, there's a lot for them to get back. So, uh, Lauren, Dorothy makes a lot of comments towards Sean kind of about his sexuality, not sexual orientation, but sexuality. Mm. And that's kind of one of the main conflicts in their relationship that comes up a lot. So is that something where you interpreted it as they want different things as far as intimacy? Or do you think it's more so they're distant because of the trauma that they suffered in their relationship. Well, surely Tony could speak more to it than I, but I, um, and what his intention was, but, um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like they're this, this couple and they have this giant crack that they're, that they're trying to, you know, this awful fissure that, that has happened in this tragedy and they're, in their family, and um, they're trying in different ways to fill it, and um, they need different uh, they need different things and want different things and um, want to acknowledge what's going on in different ways or not. Um, and uh, and I suppose with a couple, it would come out in every aspect, including in, in their sexuality. I love that they're um, kind of brutal to each other. I mean, that's. Mm -hmm awful in a marriage but pretty fun on a set and fun to play <laughs> I think in our best moments it feels like an Edward Albee play uh, you know and um, and you know we're all trapped in this house and which is very much a character and so it's like everything is uh, just resonating and shaking and I don't yeah. know. It's I a lot of like the sexuality is part of it. Yeah. They're also you know with regards to the, the sexuality they're also kind of like three months on from just having a baby and you know that, and things change physically change. You know your relationships between the husband and wife change as soon as the baby comes along. You know that you have to deal with each other in a very different way, and your focus is on something else apart from yourself. So, yeah, I think it's changing, and I think Dorothy doesn't quite understand why a lot of these changes are happening and why she, Sean is being as protect, more protective than usual because she doesn't really know what the experience has been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What is it like for you as an actress having to play that? Like, there is so much that you don't, that your character doesn't know, that you obviously do know because you've read the script. Right. <laughs> and then, of course, everyone around you is, like, trying to protect you in different ways, and you're kind of oblivious to it all. Yeah, I mean, like, I guess everybody's in their own story in this. Everyone's, like, in their own channel. And, uh, yeah. Dorothy's, I mean, yeah, on the surface, I'm playing this working mother going back to work, you know, has my news reporter and my career, and um, 
um, and what's, you know, what's fun to me to play is like where the cracks come through in that perfect veneer, you know, um, uh, I don't know, it's not, it's not particularly more, I mean, it's like, it's great writing and it's great actors to work with and, and, uh, and amazing directors and like a beautiful set and, and an incredible DP and like all of the parts, I mean, Apple and Knight and his company, like they made space for us to do our work as artists. And um, I mean, that it just felt incredibly luxurious from the sets, having every detail considered from Knight storyboarding every shot. I mean, from the rehearsals that we were granted and the time that everybody took to get everything um, to, you know, make sure everything was as we intended it. Um, it's just been, like, an incredibly luxurious process, so, I know. And same for me as an artist. Like, I was given my time and space to, to work. Yeah? Sorry, last question. <laughs> oh, so, um, I just wanted to bring up, like, on a lighter note and everything, the newscasts that you kept on playing every single episode, they, <laughs> they had a small little, per, like, they pertain to the actual, like, uh, element of the story itself and everything. Uh, did yeah. you mean for it to have that much of an impact in between every single episode to kind of like lighten slash also kind of give you the lesson of the what the what you were trying to say for each episode? And what was your favorite use cast that you did actually? <laughs> so it's, it's a two prong. Sorry, and then the last question. I love I love <laughs> how the newscasts fold into and highlight and uh, underline moments and uh, in the. Story. I think it's brilliant. I love that, Tony. Good, thank you. It's, uh, <laughs> and I was the only one who got to go on location because I got to leave that house to go do shoot my my. Uh, my news class. I went to a bowling alley once. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you were in the background of the shot. Yeah, I was on there. Oh, right, right, right. <laughs> so, For the most part, there. the other actors are trapped in the house. And I got to leave sometimes. I, I think thematically, everything you can do to point back to what your story really is all about is great, and using the television to show what. Dorothy does all day because we don't follow her yeah. that's the only insight we get so we understand her mood she walks in through the door in the evening fed up and smelling of sewage it's because yeah. we know she's been down a sewage chipping at fatbergs you know it's kind of we need that information in order to understand her and so it's just a it's just a naturally logical way to fill that gap in and and the same thing happens with food in the episode mm -hmm. the food yeah. that he cooks reflects yeah. the mood in the house can I ask Nell a question since she hasn't talked that much? Really quick. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So, <laughs> thanks, mate. <laughs> I'm curious because even when, without spoiling anything, even when the season finishes, we still don't know a lot about your character. Mm -hmm. So we see her do things, but we don't always have a clear understanding as to why. So did you get to be informed, mm -hmm. you know, kind of outside of what's actually being shot on camera to know more about your character so you can understand what she's doing and why she's doing it? I think every conversation we had, and me and Knight had, was always like, well, maybe. Like, there was never, they never definitively told me anything about Leanne. <laughs> um, I know as much as you guys. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> Honestly, I mean, we've had conversations where there's been thoughts as to what she, you know, what's maybe going on, but they won't bloody tell me. But mainly because... <laughs> I but she's made things. lots of she's made <laughs> lots of yeah. beautiful decisions in her performance. You can see, Me? She, yeah, because you're very specific. When I've got you my know, back. To that. You, you're very specific, so she's she's obviously made. Yeah, I think I tried to figure her out as best as I could as a as an actress, but. Yeah, she's a very mysterious character, yeah. and she's stayed that way. But I have an idea of what's maybe going to happen in the future. You know enough. <laughs> <laughs> you know enough before you're in you know. Tell Power. me more. <laughs> Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I was good, man. I was just listening. Thank you so much. Cool. Bye, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you.